First of all, let's start with installing PowerShell, Microsoft PowerShell. If you open terminal, and if you go to the terminal here, you can see it start with uh, PowerShell, but this is Windows PowerShell. But uh, I want to use the Microsoft PowerShell and you can see there is PowerShell 1. So this is the PowerShell. So let's install it. So let's open the terminal here again. And if you see it started with Windows PowerShell again, but if you click on the drop down menu, you will see the PowerShell option. So click here and it'll load the PowerShell. And you can see the PowerShell version 7.4.6. Now let's go to the, click on the drop down menu and go to the settings. And the first thing is startup. And here is the default profile. It is actually showing Windows PowerShell. So let's uh, use PowerShell for the default profile and for the default terminal application. So let's choose Windows Terminal. Okay, that's it. So if I close it, close it and open the terminal again, you will see it will start with the Microsoft PowerShell. Okay, that's the first thing we need to do. Let's close it. Next, let's install uh, Miniconda. So let's search Miniconda and if I go installing Miniconda, you will see the Windows installation to download different versions. If you go there, and if you go to the repository, you will find all the available Miniconda version. So the latest one is uh, 3.12, but I really like to use 3.11 for my base system. So let's search Miniconda 3, Python 3.11, Windows X86, 64. Let's download it. I want to install this one because this will be the base Python for my system. And I can definitely use different kind, different uh, Python versions with the environment for Miniconda, okay? So let's install it. It's so simple, just next, agree. And here just for me and now the location. Here is the one thing I want to add Miniconda 3 to my path environment so that if I search, uh, write Conda on my terminal, it will work. And if you want, you can also register Miniconda 3 as your default Python version. I don't need that. Let's install it. Okay, so our Miniconda is installed. Let's close it. The next important thing we need to install is Git. So we want to install Git for our system and it'll be Git for Windows. Let's search it and go to the download page and download the 64-bit version because my one is 64-bit version. If you want, you can also use 32-bit version. So it's downloaded, let's install it. And in the Git, everything will be same. So on the select components, I just want to uh, take this one. This is a add a Git bash profile to your Windows terminal. So we will use Windows terminal and I want to integrate it to the terminal. So let's install it and everything is default. I don't want to change anything. Git is installed. Let's finish it. So now our Miniconda is installed. Git is installed. Let's open Windows Terminal. And here is the terminal window. And it's loaded and you can see the base here. That means our Miniconda is integrated with the PowerShell. That's great. And if you click on the arrow, you can also see the Git option here. So it is integrated with uh, terminal. That's great, right? So this is the main thing. If you don't see the base here, that means your Miniconda is still not integrated with Windows Terminal. In that case, you need to run this command conda in it and it should be uh, initialized with your PowerShell, okay? Uh, I already have the base here. That means it's integrated, so I don't need to do anything. Now, Almost everything is done to create our perfect Python environment, development environment with ZID, right? So everything is done, but we didn't install Z yet. So let's go for the Z. Let's close terminal and search ZIDE. And if you go to the ZIDE and if you click on the download now, 
you will find here, you have the download option for Mac, you have Linux, but for Windows, it is not yet available. You need to build it from source. So that's a pain, right? Uh, so I find a way to install it with Scoop. Scoop is a package manager for Windows. So we'll use Scoop for this. So let's search Scoop and scoop sh let's search it and you can see the scoop dot sh here so let's go here this is the scoop um, website so in the first you can see a powershell terminal open powershell terminal from pc prompt and run this one this will install and configure the scoop for our system okay let's open terminal again and here let's install scoop so let's copy the first command first and paste it on the PowerShell. Okay, that's done. The next thing is we need to use copy this command and paste it here. And it will install the scoop in our system. Okay, you can see our scoop is installed. That's perfectly perfect, right? So the next thing, now, now let's create our uh, development directory first. So let's open the browser. I want to create another one for my development. So let's make it PyDev. Okay. So the directory is created. Let's go inside this directory and right click here and open terminal. And you can see the terminal is open inside the projects directory and PyDev directory. Okay. Now, again, let's go to the scoop uh, website and search for Z id here so you will if you search with z you will find some fonts and everything but we need the z uh, nightly one so here you can see the two commands to install z on your system through scoop so let's uh, use copy this first one this will add the bucket okay so let's run it Okay, the bucket was added successfully, that's fine. So next thing is we need to install it, um, copy this command and install it. This is the installation command. So let's run this and it should install Z in our system perfectly. Okay, Z is installed. So let's run it, Z and dot. It should open uh, the directory, the projects PyDev directory, okay, with Z. Let's run it. For the first time it may take a little bit time so let's wait okay so here is the z it's running and voila we have a z id in windows it's so simple right so that's perfect now let's uh, configure it a little bit okay so to do that what we need to do is we need to go to the uh, let's first start with the terminal okay let's click on the terminal and you can see here it is actually running windows powershell and if uh, you remember in the terminal we are running microsoft powershell okay so i want to change this so this is our first change so first we need to find the location where the PowerShell Microsoft PowerShell is in terminal and let's check this again and this is the location let's copy this location again okay copied it and paste it here again let's check what will happen you can see now it's showing the error invalid user settings so let's put double slashes here and let's save it and now the error is gone so let's try powershell and you can see this microsoft powershell is showing so there was some problem with the copying but now it's working perfectly so i will actually share this full thing so that you can just copy and paste and just change the this part with the command and it'll work perfectly so our uh, one is working perfectly now let's we are inside the pydev and let's create a pydev uh, environment with miniconda okay let's check the python version 
I installed the Python 3.11, right? Let's try this. Yes, you can see that I'm in the base environment and the Python 3.11 is the default. So let's exit it. And now let's create the development environment for my PyDev. So for this conda, create minus n for the name and the name is PyDev. And I want to use Python is equal to 3.12. Our default one is 3.11, but I can use any of the Python version for my environment. So let's run it. And definitely you can do this on the terminal, no problem. And I proceed, I press yes for the proceed. So it's now installing the environment. So let's activate this environment. Paste it. Okay. So now we are in the PyDev environment, that's perfect. So let's close it. Now, what we want to do is create a Python test file, okay? So let's create a new file, right click here, new file, and this is test.py. And if I use test.py, you can see there is no kernel here. Install IPy kernel. So for that, I can install it with pip install ipy kernel it'll install the ipy kernel for our system okay and now we need to register our pydev uh, environment kernel okay to do that the command will be python minus m ipy kernel and then install now we need to put the user and then the name of the development environment, it is PyDev. You can put uh, PyDev here, and then I want to show the display. So the display name, whatever you put here, you will see this on the kernel, okay? So here, let's make it Python PyDev, that's fine actually, so that I can easily recognize which kernel is this? So let's register this kernel. And you see, installed kernel uh, pydev in this location, that's fine. So let's close this Python one and let's open this again. And if you click on the select kernel, you see the Python 3.12 is available for our uh, project, okay? Let's close everything and let's run it again. Let's go to the project directory. Here is the project directory and right click here and open the terminal. So it'll open in the directory. I don't need to change in that case. Okay, so that's fine. Let's run z dot and it'll open the z id. And if I click test.py, you can see now the pydev is showing. Okay, so Whatever kernel you actually register with IPA kernel, it will be here. So you can definitely easily uh, use that. So let's select this kernel. And now I will show you how you can run Python interactively on um, ZID. And that is, uh, ZID has the ripple option. So if you click on the line and click here, this is the ripple run code for Python, okay? So if you click here, it'll run this interactively. So it is actually showing test. If I run print and hello take jotters and just put another print command, it's great, okay? So now I'm going to show you one thing. If you press here and run this ripple, it'll show the hello take jotters. But if I just select both and run the ripple, it'll run these two all together. So that's the interactive one. You can actually run your data science projects, everything, and run this step by step. If you want to check whether the program is working or not, you can just select everything and if i run again you can see everything is running perfectly so that's the zide which is really a 
great IDE. I really like this IDE because uh, the reality is ZIDE is so fast and so simple. Um, I really like ZIDE. So now it's ZIDE, now I want to use the AI function, okay? To do that, I really like the, you know, uh, the DeepSeq coder, DeepSeq version three, which recently came out. And I really like that. So I'm going to show you how you can configure this, okay? So if you click on this icon, you will see this is the inline assistant. There is a assistant panel. You can uh, configure your DeepSeq from here. So let's first open the browser and search DeepSeq Coder. Sorry, DeepSeq V3. And here I have the API. So let's access the API and it'll take you to the API website or API part and if you don't have this just log in there and buy some tokens I just brought five dollar tokens so let's go and API keys and create a new key and make it Z and it'll create the key and don't worry I will delete this API before I actually publish this video so let's go to the Z and let's paste it here API key is configured let's go here on the Z configuration and configuration option and here you will see there is open AI because DeepSeq is open AI uh, compatible so here open AI and you can see the open AI custom models but we need the open AI compatible one okay so this is the uh, command we need let's copy this one let's try with this okay actually this is also my first time so let's check it let's put a comma here and press this one so this is the language one and for deep sick we need to put the okay the URL will be this okay the model name is actually deep seek chat let's paste it here display name is deep seek v3 and token is there and let's save it now let's go here and open the AI assistant and let's check whether it's available here. Yes, DeepSeq V3. Now let's run command hi and control enter. Yes, now the DeepSeq is working perfectly. Close this chat. Okay, let's open this and general this. A simple Python code to test. Let's run it from here. Okay, let's run this. Okay, I accept it. And let's copy these and run Ripple. And it's working perfectly. So that's actually uh, all for today. Um, in this video, I showed you how you can make a perfect Python development environment with ZID on Windows. Uh, hopefully you like this video and if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll help me to produce more videos for Windows and Linux. So hopefully you will subscribe it. Thank you so much and have a good day.